And now, Deep P.E.D. Thoughts with Old Jaker. So, most bodybuilders will use testosterone as a base. This is a typical, like, mid-range, you know, competitive bodybuilder cycle. It'll be something like 1,200 milligrams of testosterone, 800 milligrams of DECA, um, or they'll mix it up with primaballin for four to 800 milligrams, and then they'll typically throw in either a trend or uh, some other DHT form. Now, trend, DECA, and some of these other ones are known to be the most anabolic and somewhat androgenic, right? But those are the real growing ones. Not trend so much because it raises your metabolism so high, but DECA for sure. But what if the lean muscle gains that were happening from these, just like in the cattle uh, study that showed that oxytocin, when they gave cattle trenbolone and estradiol, so as long as your estradiol is high, but they give these cattle trenbolone, their oxytocin levels went up 97-fold. Okay? What if most of the actual, like, real steroid, quote-unquote, anabolic growth that bodybuilders are seeing on anabolic steroid cycles is coming downstream from the IGF-1, from the oxytocin that's produced, the IGF-1, and so forth. Don't they say that on Trenbolone you produce more IGF-1? What if that IGF-1 is being produced downstream? What if this is a completely overlooked pathway and that we're using anabolic steroids to kick this off but what we're trying to kick off is the oxytocin cascade, which induces, you know, which triggers IGF-1, growth hormone, and all these EGF and all these other substances. And not only that, but it's from my research, the studies on EGF show that it acts very similarly to MGF, which is that it integrates and uh, activates satellite muscle cells, but it does not cause them to proliferate or grow necessarily. So it's the first stage of hyperplasia. And oxytocin releases both EGF and MGF, well, both EGF and IGF-1, which will turn partially into MGF downstream. So that's a double whammy. Part of the reason that steroid cycles stop producing gains isn't necessarily from myostat, and I'll research that further. It's not from AR receptor downregulation. That's been disproven. In fact, it's the opposite. But what if it's from all the oxytocin that's being produced, producing IGF-1, and at a certain point when insulin sensitivity changes or certain changes happen in the body hormonally, that conversion of IGF-1 changes to almost completely be converted to IGF-1 EB, which is MGF. MGF tells the muscles to basically go to sleep and protect themselves. What if? That does seem to be what's happening on my fast. They say there's a time of quiet muscle cell quiescence several days after a fast and also during a fast. Is that because of the MGF that's being produced from the stress of the environment of the, of the fast? Uh, the lack of IGF-1 and the ratio of IGF-1 insulin and so forth being low but growth hormone MGF and other repair factors being very high? I think so. I noticed that when I took my first shot of oxytocin six days after my fast ended I had not hardly gained a pound and I was eating everything in sight. Overnight I blew up from that one shot of oxytocin. I think what happened is it just switched the switch from quiescence to anabolic. Like and those are the two cycles, and I think that might be the pathway that's shutting that anabolism down. There's an overconvergence of overconverting of IGF-1 and other peptides to MGF and other similar peptides like EGF versus the ratio of IGF-1 and other growth-permitting aspects of that same peptide cascade.